So, good evening. Uh, welcome to our second budget forum. Uh, I'm going to go over a few things about our, our budget and our and the ballot coming up in May, as well as um, well take questions. And although we don't have a lot of people here, we are uh, will be available on our website. So, if people at home who are watching have questions, they can always email uh, into our website, and we can respond there. So. People didn't make it out, but might be watching at home. I do encourage them to ask questions, um, and this PowerPoint will be up with the with the presentation or with the, the video. So, as always, we start with our budget goals. Uh, the, the first, first and foremost, we always have the same goal, and it's to balance the needs of our students with our community's values and their ability to pay. Uh, we always strive to create a tax levy, the uh, uh, budget that is tax levy compliant, uh, meaning we are not looking to create a budget that overrides the tax levy. Uh, stay within our tax levy limit, which we'll talk about in a few seconds. Continue our long-term fiscal planning to avoid year-to-year -year spikes in you know, that regular budgeting and projecting to make sure that we're not any, any time you know, really in, in a position where we're, we're uh, in trouble. Provide necessary building maintenance and establish new capital reserve funds. There are also goals of this year, and that we'll talk about the capital reserve fund as well uh, in a few minutes. Just something quick about the tax levy limit. You, you, I always talk about that one, and, and one thing important to know is it is not a 2% tax cap. It is a tax levy limit. It's a calculation, uh, which we'll show in a few minutes, that almost never equals 2%. It's different for every school district in the state of New York, and it's different for each school district year to year, depending on parts of that calculation. Um, important to point out that the community is just, uh, you know, making sure that we stay within the tax limit. We've also made sure that we stay at or below that tax levy limit. Every year we've been there since this law was established in 2011. So uh, the board has been very fiscally responsible. We have not asked the taxpayers to override the tax levy limit. And like I said, we've stayed at or below the tax levy limit each year, even though it varies from year to year. I'll show a little bit of that too. When we put on the ballot the capital reserve fund, a lot of people don't know what is a capital reserve fund and what is it for. And a capital reserve fund really is that we ask the voters to allow us to create a fund and start putting money into it for uh, capital, capital expenses that come up as we go along. So we don't have to ask the voters every time we need some money or we don't have to take it from the regular contingent budget. We have this reserve in place. Um, it would allow it to us to allocate funds to offset future costs, capital construction projects, and, and associated with bonding. It also allows us to leverage that against our state aid to create larger uh, capital projects, which uh, we're going to ask the voters to vote on also this year. So what would do, it, it, again, it, it would allow us to do several things. One, put some money in there if we have unexpected uh, expected, uh, income. Also, if we have, we have a pretty large amount of money coming in soon from the from the sale of the Sioni building, and we would like to have a place to put that money. And so we'd like to put that money into this reserve, which will allow us, again, to use it for capital expenses debt into the future. We've had this before. This is our third capital reserve, uh, at least inside I've been here. And the things we've been able to do, I won't read them all, but we've been able to do many things in many of our buildings. Um, again, we don't usually use the capital reserve to do the really exciting things. We don't do any, you know, uh, you know, it's not a new gym, it's not an auditorium. What we're using the capital reserve fund for is just the kind of those general maintenance things, those things that we really need, our boilers, our, pi our, our plumbing, our heating, roofs, site work like our um, sidewalks and, and our driveways and parking lots. So again, upgrading to ADA, getting rid of asbestos, things that really need to be done that aren't necessarily seen by the community. Um, you know, they see the trucks come and go, but they don't really see what we what we've done. And those are, you know, really that's the that that's the meat and potatoes of our buildings. Having having the roofs right, having the the, uh, the workings inside, the, the engineering inside work properly is is um, very important. Oh, the last the last bullet I didn't know. You know, again, establishing that new capital reserve enables us to continue protect, protect the community for the, their investment. We've asked over the last six years, at least, for the community to make a pretty hefty investment in our buildings. We did about $30 million a few years ago, and we continue to make investments into our buildings. We want to protect those investments by making sure we keep up to date. We all know what happens when we do not keep things up to date. And we've spent a lot of time back in 2013 looking at Kingston High School and deferred maintenance and eventually comes back to you. Know, that it always comes back to you. And we saw the deferred maintenance at Kingston High School, and this board uh, acted 
to bring Hinkins to the high school up to date. But to avoid that in the future with other buildings, making sure we keep these buildings up to date, safe, clean, and healthy for our students. What we'll be asking the voters to vote on this year is some updates to, our, to use our capital reserve and, and take that and leverage it with our state aid to, at no, no additional cost to the taxpayers, make some of these improvements that I talked about to three of our buildings. First is our Edson Elementary School. And as you can see, we're not really getting very specific, but we're looking at improvements of, of our walkways, our asphalt, our paving. Anyone who's been in parking lots knows that we have several parking lots that need some help, and Edson is one of them. Select window replacements. These windows are original, and they are not energy efficient, and honestly, they're not, they're not working properly. They're not opening, they're not closing, and actually, in some places, they're rotting out along the bottoms and literally falling out of the building, so we're asking for uh, money to do that. And, and some select mechanical upgrades, again, like I say, our heating, our, our electricity, those kind of things, our electrical systems, I should say. <clears throat> John F. Kennedy, very similar. Anyone who's from Kingston knows that John F. Kennedy and Edson are the same building. Same era, same building. Edson has a basement, John F. Kennedy doesn't, but other than that, they're the same building and have many of the same needs. Improvements in the sidewalk, the asphalt, masonry repairs along on the walls. We did some work at uh, JFK a few years ago, and we want to finish that up. Um, window replacement, again, same thing, window replacement. Mechanical upgrades, elevator for ADA compliance. We're not ADA compliant in that building. And, and the emergency lighting system needs to be replaced in that building. Again, not the exciting things, but the things that really need to happen. The other school we work on is Miller Middle School. Improvements again, walkways, asphalt. We did some, we did some improvements on the bus loop area a few years ago, but we need to improve, I mean, the front area, I should say, a few years ago. Now we need to do some of those improvements on the bus loop area. Um, select window replacements. This curtain wall with these windows at, at Miller, which are very similar to the ones at Edson and JFK, um, if you're in the building at all, you can tell. They don't open. They don't close. They're original. Um, again, unfortunately, in some cases, they're not. They're falling out. So we need to have those replaced. Auditorium renovations, which has been a big one with our community. I say it's not a lot of exciting things, but the auditorium renovation is exciting. Um, old seats, missing seats, floor tiles that are cracked, broken, or missing. Old carpets being held down by duct tape, as you can see there. So those are the kind of things. Um, we really want to improve at Miller. That's an important space. A lot of things go on there, and we do want to make it, uh, you know, usable for our students and our community. Old electrical panel and boards, you know, just some of the, the inner workings, and also emergency way. So those three things we'll be asking the community to give us the uh, permission to use our capital reserve fund and leverage with our state aid to do this at no additional cost to taxpayers. So we're, we'd like to see our community um, look favorably upon that. The cost of this project is going to be about $16 million. That's the maximum we can do with what we have in our, in our capital reserve and our state aid. So you know, it really puts it together to create a lot more money and a lot more opportunity for, for actual work. Um, I'm going to say again, no additional cost to a local taxpayer by using those, those my reserve funds in the state aid. The budget itself. Our tax levy limit. I talked about the tax levy calculation, and Mr. Olson and Ms. Woodard are our tax levy calculation experts here, and they've calculated our tax levy for this year. You see down at the bottom, 3.6. So we've talked about, I said earlier, it's never two, it's almost never 2%, it's different from year to year. Well, 3.6 obviously isn't 2%, and we look at last year, it was 1.35%. So it's drastically different from last year to this year. It's not 2%. And it's not a tax cap, it's a tax levy. These things are you know, really, the increase is driven much by our debt service and our, and our building um, project. Looking at the tax levy impact, so this is really, this is our budget right now. This is, our, this is where we are with our spending and with our uh, income and where we think, where our gap is with each, each level of the tax levy limit. So as you can see, we have about 3.2% increase in spending and what looks to be about a 0.79 increase in revenues. Uh, that right there is to set off a few alarms um, we're concerned. We look at our tax levy limit. Now, we, we broke this down into just the three areas, or three different numbers, I should say. If we went to the maximum tax levy limit, 3.6%, uh, we would be looking at a gap, which means a gap that we would need to close, of about $1.2 million. I do want to go back and also say these revenues here 
are, uh, that's inclusive of $1 million in fund balance being applied to those revenues. If we move to, the, to a 2.55 cap, we would see a gap of about $2.3 million. And if we went to 1.96, which is just below the 2% that, that many people, like I say over and over again, but people still think it's a 2% tax cap, but we stayed at that 2%, we would have a, a gap of about 2.8, um, $2.9 million to close. And that is to maintain what we currently have in the Kansas City School District as far as program and personnel moving forward. So what can we do? What, what are we thinking here? Or, or what are our, what are the kind of wild cards still out there? Well, the biggest wild card out there right now is still state aid. So we have the governor's proposal, which this is based on the governor's proposal. And we're hearing from the assembly, and we'll hear from the Senate, and we'll, we'll know a little better, obviously, in a couple of weeks, um, if we have an on-time budget, what our school aid would be. Um, are we going to see two, two point two, or three million dollars increase, two point nine million dollars increase in state aid? It, it's pretty unlikely. I think what we're doing now is our, we're sharpening our pencils and looking at our budget line by line and seeing where are the areas that we can, we can create efficiencies and where are the areas that we can uh, save money to, to to close this gap and, like I said, maintain the programs and personnel that we currently have in Kansas City School District. Lastly, there's going to be four things on the ballot this year. So the first thing would be our budget, obviously. The second thing would be the creation of the new capital reserve that I talked about. The third thing is the capital project, the renovations of JFK, Edson, and Miller School, which we discussed. And the last would be the election of three board members, uh, the board members of the Board of Education. And that is where we are with our budget for 2018-2019 right now. Any questions? The board votes for the budget on what day? 21st of April, I think, or 20, we have me on 21st. No, it's the 18th. 18th, yeah, 18th, 18th of April. The yeah. budget will be, will be presented to the board. Hopefully we'll, we'll have a state budget very on time, and we'll be able to create that budget to be able to present to the board. And we also plan on having more public opportunity um, after that April 1st. Will the board um, have draft budget in hand with further efficiencies prior to the April 4th meeting? Yes. What we'll do is we'll go through the budget and we will, you know, pare it down where we can. And I think one of, one of the things that we'd like this, I would like to do is let you know, you know, we'll bullet out what are the, where are the areas. And you can see them, the changes. And I know we've often had questions about maybe we can bring that out a little more so where we found those efficiencies to get to where we were. And again, you know, there's the board will also have the opportunity to talk about do we want to apply more fund balance than the one million? Last year we applied two million in fund balance. Now that was higher than what we were comfortable with years past. That was the most we we put in, I think, since I've been here. Um, but we did have some unexpended um, unexpended budget uh, money from the year before that we were able to put in there and, and, and really reduce the tax levy, the taxpayers um, tax levy. We had a 1.36 <coughs> tax levy limit, but actually, we actually only levy what well, this is what 1.06, right? Because we put that as yeah. so almost we only levied really about one percent um, on the tax levy increase last year. Will you do the breakdown of homestead, not homestead parcels? We can do that. What was the projected increase in um, uh, health insurance in that draft budget? In this draft budget, our projected increase in health insurance was 8.7. Uh, well, we have a couple different plans, uh, as you know. So I think uh, what we anticipated in the ATF plan was 5.7. Um, in the other plans, was it 8? Um, I would like to say, in response to having the budget for the fourth, it probably won't be much before that. No. Because we're, we're out next week, but I'll, I mean, I'll be here. But I don't anticipate we're going to get the state budget, but hopefully we will by Friday or Monday, which we <coughs> may or may not be here. Monday. Yeah, I think we'll be, we'll so be crunching it right Tuesday up to the moment. Hopefully by Tuesday or, you know, mm -hmm. but hopefully we'll have a state budget by next 
Friday. And then um, we'll be able to go into the, the yeah, into the board um, docs so that we can review it before the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, well that I mean the the budget itself will come out that Friday, so that's when the board agenda goes public. And I don't it goes live. So we there may be we may be filtering it in between then and the fourth. I think you know that, that fourth is tight. Well I think People would understand if the, you know, the draft budget got added and because the state budget wasn't in yet. Right. And, then, you know. and, and, and it's, there's nothing, vote. we're not voting on anything for conservative budget discussion. So we'll do our best to have as much information in the hands of the board and available to the public on the, on the 4th. That is our, our the entire meeting, uh, outside of a few small things, will be about talking about the budget. So we'll have at least some talking points and some and, you know, information in the board's hands by the 4th. Sure. Um, so I think the governor's budget was a $690 million increase overall, or something like that, close to that. Yeah. And what, what, was our, what was our number? As far as percentage? Well, I mean, the increase, what is the increase? What was the increase in the governor's budget for Kingston City Schools? Well, if you, if, if, you to that the, yeah, if, you, if we look at the increase in the budget removing from expense-based aid and building aid, and we look at just our, our um, you know, our foundation, aid. our foundation aid, our spendable money, right. we're at about $800,000. That's about where our increase in actual dollars is. If you look, and I said this to a few members of the media, if you look on the report itself, it looks like we had a 10% increase in, in state aid, but we didn't get a 10% increase in state aid because most of that comes is building aid, others is expense-driven aid, and the, the foundation aid really is where the difference is for us. That's where the money comes that, that we can use to offset increases in expenses, as well as you know, if we had it to add a new program. Um, and that's, that's less than a million dollars. Now I know the assembly was looking at 1.5 billion in increase. The governor had 6.9. Uh, the Senate had really said very much right now. Um, I've been told, I don't know if it's true, that they think they're going to settle somewhere in there around the, the, the billion mark, 1.1 maybe, in there. We'll, we'll see. But even if you took that, for, you know, even if you took that and, and you put $1 million to every school district in the state of New York, um, that's not a huge increase for, for school districts. Not that it would work out that way, but so. Yes, Mr. Mike. Oh, uh, the teachers' new contract, if it gets finalized and approved, Will that include it into the budget? Yes, the that's, that's basically the increases? number that we, yeah. For, oh, well, as far as uh, salaries and health insurance, it, that, that's been projected in this Okay. So what we did here at last week's um, Austin County School Board Association, when we were talking about pilots, uh, representative from NISBA said that they pulled out those caps on transportation reimburse uh, uh, buses right. and, building. and building it. Yeah, the, the assembly is, is thrown those right out of that bill. I mean, some of those, some of those um, I call them gimmicky things that right. I think the governor puts in there, just to have them taken off so people like they can see something. Um, that those, those, the assembly and the Senate are not in a line with the governor on those those caps. So it was unlikely there was going to be very many new programs, right? That that right, that is unlikely. I mean, I think one of the things that we constantly programmatically and one of the things I, I, I task our teaching and learning committee with is looking at things that we're doing, evaluating them, to make sure that those are actually having the impact we want on students. So while you know we may not be looking at new programs, if there are things that aren't working, we may be looking at new programs that are just you know replacing things that we already cost you know, the, those expenses. So it's not new money. New programs don't always need new money. Sometimes we have to look at what we're doing and say, hold it, are we doing this correctly? And again, and, and also just looking at being more efficient. So we look at many different things around our special ed programs. We're looking at things you know that we can do to be more efficient 
um, and, and, and get what we need out of our students. We did this with our reading program a few years ago, making sure that we serve more students with the same number of teachers. We did this with our speech therapy. We put speech therapy down into early speech, down into the elementaries, which would then reduce the number of students who needed speech when we moved as, as they moved up. So it was a, some of these things are new programs, but they're trade-offs for things that maybe weren't as effective um, as what we believe we put in place will be. And the mandates keep coming. So you know, and while they, this, you know, the expenses don't, or the revenues don't go up, the mandates keep coming. So um, you know, we, we have to make sure that we're still meeting our, our required uh, our requirements around mandates from the state. Okay. Well, again, you know, I, I encourage anyone who is watching this um, who couldn't make it out tonight, if you have questions, you can email them right to our website. We have an email there, and I will, um, myself or, or someone who does something, will respond quickly so people know uh, what they need to know. And we'll be putting out a date for sometime after April 1st. April, I want to also tell people April 4th to come out to the board meeting, is we will be just discussing budget that night. So there will be a, a <coughs> only on budget and an opportunity for the community to hear where we are um, and where we need to go. And we will be scheduling further budget forums after that. That April 4th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.